for the board meeting for uh, December 16, 2014. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Aarons? Absent. Kammerer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Martin? Here. Rinky? Here. Shipman? Here. President Wallace? Here. And I've asked the United Pentecostal Pastor Yance to do our invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings on our lives, for health, life, for safety, and most of all for hope. We bring our petitions to you, Lord. We ask you to bless this meeting tonight. Guide these men and women with intelligence and genius that's beyond them. We need your divine direction. We've got a lot of problems in our world, Lord. We have them in our communities. But in spite of that, we live with hope that you will guide us and keep us. Give these men and women the mind of God that they would know direction, make wise decisions, and bless our city, Lord, this fair city that uh, we reside in. We pray that you would bless it and make our lives a blessing to other people. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Yance. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Let the record reflect that uh, Trustee Aarons is here. <coughs> Moving along, we have the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be retained and to be enacted by one motion. Um, there will be no separate discussion on these items unless the board member so requests in the event that it will be removed and, and put at the general order of business and the point on the agenda at this point, does anybody like to add anything to the consent agenda? Um, I'd like to add number F1 on the consent agenda. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to amend the consent agenda to include the minutes for board and committee minutes for December 2nd, 2014, the bills list for December 16th, 2014, and also including under Public Works Committee F1 2015 Parkway Tree Replacement Project bids. No moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Shipman, seconded by Trustee Martin. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aarons? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. The motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended consent agenda. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Martin. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aarons? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. The motion carries. That brings us down to Treasurer's Report. There's none this evening. No President's Report this evening. Seems like a holiday or something. Close. Uh, um, at this point, is there any questions uh, the board might have for staff? Oh, no, no question, not a question, but I would like to, to thank our public works staff. I use that, uh, that app again, and uh, uh, Keith Watson over at public, our Go, uh, Go Request. Go, Re Go Request. It's a great little app. I don't know what it's called, but I, I know how to use it. And uh, to get a pair of shoes that were dangling from a parkway tree. So Keith Watson called me. What I were you doing emails. in the parkway tree, Yankee? Uh, my, my daughter actually spotted it, <laughs> you know, of, of all things. So uh, great, great work. Great work. That's good. Good app. And while we're commending the village, I think that the uh, staff did an excellent job in putting on the uh, holiday uh, uh, meal and the Christmas festivities for the uh, people who work in the village. And it was very yeah, nice. Well done. Yeah. And I also believe 
some congratulations are in order, Madam Administrator. You have something to add? Or something the new, training board. New appointment? Yes. Uh, we are. Do we, maybe we need to sing Hail to the Chief. Hail to the Chief, absolutely. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, um, our uh, Administrator Valerie has been uh, elected, I guess, Chairman of the Board for the Police um, Training Board, right? Law Enforcement, Law Enforcement and Training Board. So we're very honored that, uh, the entire state. well done, that uh, shows well on the village and um, she's put a lot, a lot of time and hours on that board and um, we're looking forward to more good stuff coming from there, so good job. She gets to carry now and has a badge, so I wouldn't mess with her. I know, right. The chairman. Can I ask a question? Sure. Well, I, I just wanted to ask Chief Williams, how does this reflect upon your position? I mean, are you, are you respected all over the state because you're Valerie's chief of police, or are, are you under a, you know, a microscope because of that? How does that affect you? In all seriousness, it's a huge honor for the village. Uh, it's a very... Uh, competitive position. It takes a lot of uh, years and a lot of uh, high esteem by a lot of people throughout the state in order to even be considered for that position. So as a chief of police, I'm honored to have a, my boss be uh, uh, the chair of that board. Very elite position. Not to be understated at all. Good answer. Good answer. I, I wanted to, uh, at this time, compliment the Bartlett Hills staff on the um, the wonderful Christmas party that we had there. Uh, is Paul here? Paul and Mary? Oh, and Phil. Did, why, did we have a putting contest? <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. <laughs> And I think it's important to note now that Phil's standing up that he just sent us a little note saying we had the best December at the golf course that uh, in history, right? It was the best December day that late into the month for golfers by far. Yeah, we had 127 golfers on Sunday, 58 on Saturday to my recollection. So it was quite a weekend for December, that's for sure. Is there anything we can attribute to that? Was there any advertising or just... Good weather. I, I had sent out an weather? email blast to our database a couple of weeks ago to let them know the golf course was open, and obviously the weather had everything to do with that, and uh, the fact that there were a lot of golf courses closed at this point in the season, and um, we we gained much from that. Good, good work. Good work. Thank you. Anything else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the town hall portion of the meeting. Uh, this is a part of the meeting where uh, anyone that would like to address the board, please step up to the podium, state your name, and um, please try to keep your comments to three minutes. Would anybody like to address the board at this time? Hearing none, we'll move along to the standing committee reports. Uh, first standing committee report is planning and zoning committee trust chaired by Trustee Cameron. Thank you, President Wallace. There are two items on the Planning and Zoning Committee this evening, the first of which is the petition for a special use permit for packaged liquor sales, including beer, wine, and liquor, at the existing CVS located at 1099 West Army Trail Road, Bartlett. The petitioner, Highland Park CVS LLC, the operator doing business is CVS Pharmacy number 5688 of the 13,057 square foot convenience store and pharmacy was originally approved by the village in 2003. The petitioner has indicated that approximately 4% of the store's overall shelf and refrigerated display areas will be devoted to packaged package liquor sales. The hours of operation for this store are currently from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m., seven days a week. The hours for this Class C liquor license that the petitioner is requesting are Sundays through Thursdays from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m., and Fridays and Saturdays from 8 a.m. until 12 a.m. The Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on the petitioner's request for a special use permit for the package sale of beer, wine, and liquor and recommended approval subject to certain conditions, including that not more than 25 percent of the cooler shall be displayed for the, so shall be used for the display and sale of packaged alcohol, alcoholic beverages and liquor, and no more than 20 percent of the total shelf space be used 
for the display and sale of alcoholic beverages and liquor. With that, I move to pass ordinance 2014-98, an ordinance approving a special use permit for packaged beer, wine, and liquor sales for CVS Pharmacy at Army Trail Road and Route 59 as presented. Second. Moved by Trustee Kammerer, seconded by Trustee Ahrens. Is there any discussion? I have a, two questions, I think, for staff, which should be pretty simple. There's uh, no remaining liquor stores in that strip mall. Is that correct, Jim? Everything that was there is now gone. Because I know there was one there that was That's correct. adjacent to Haas. So That's all further gone. to the west, east. All right. And the hours of this particular request mirror Walgreens and CBS and the other retail-type establishments in town as far as 8 a.m. to 10 and the hours, yeah, they're pretty similar. I don't know Walgreens for sure, but the other CBS, it mirrors that. Very good. That's all I have. Any other questions? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Camera? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. That motion carries. The second item on the Planning and Zoning Committee agenda this evening is the RTA technical assistant grant agreement. The village applied for and received a technical assistance grant from the Regional Transportation Authority to prepare a downtown transportation oriented development TOD plan. This was one of the recommendations from the EDC which the board reviewed in early 2014. The project budget for this item is 125000 but under the terms of the grant the RTA will pay up to 100000 of that cost. To move forward with the downtown TOD plan grant, the village is required to approve of the draft project scope of services. <coughs> Therefore, I move to pass Rev resolution 2014-99, a resolution authorizing applications for and execution of a technical assistance agreement under the Regional Transportation Authorities general authority to make such grants for a Village of Bartlett downtown transit-oriented development plan. Second. It's moved by Trustee Kammerer, seconded by Trustee Martin. Is there any discussion? So what exactly are we going to be receiving as a result of this study? The RTA will put out an RFP for a planning consultant firm that will bid on this scope of services. We're not the only uh, community that's received one of these. There's, there's, I think, eight to ten, and they will have consultants bid on these different scopes of services under an RFP, and then we will receive those services from the selected consultant. We'll have a say in that, and they'll prepare a transit-oriented development plan that will follow this scope of services. And basically, it will be an evaluation of our downtown and improve uh, a plan to help improve the downtown. Okay, so we're not going to be spending $25,000 of our funds to study planters. It'll be more broadly, it'll be based on this scope of service. It'll be a broad-based study of the downtown area, business attraction, how to relate, you know, opportunities for redevelopment areas, uh, opportunities for not only commercial but residential. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty involved analysis of the downtown and the study. And they'll, the result will be a plan that we can use if we do create the TIF district and the plan identifies redevelopment projects, you can use the TIF funds to fund those redevelopment projects. It actually works quite nicely with that. Will the planners be able to use our, our traffic study that we just finished? Uh, what I'm the, sure they'll, they'll use yeah. any resources that are available to them. Yes. Okay. Where are we going to get the 25K from? We'll, we, we will put it in our budget for the next fiscal year under our professional services uh, line item for planning. Oh, so this, this, this isn't something we have to come up with this year? No. We, we, the, the, 
the way they do it, actually this week they will present our scope of services and the RFPs on the consultants to the RTA board. The RTA board still has to make a selection. This is a precursor to it. They want to know that the communities that have applied for the grant and received them are on board, and that's what this resolution does. We will eventually enter into an intergovernmental agreement, and then the grant, the actual study, won't start till probably late January, mid-February. And then we will fund, that. It'll, it'll carry through till probably the summer or even longer. So that's when, when, when they're all said and done, that's when we have to pay. So our consult. bill will come due in the summer? Y yeah. Are we going to be able to control the bill? Because anything over $125,000 is going to be uh, uh, something that we're going to have to pay. I think we have to work closely with the consultants. Okay. And I yeah. think that if we're committing to a very specific amount, nothing more than that. So I think the agreement, and we have another agreement coming, as Jim said, and that will limit that amount. Okay. Okay. A few questions that I had. The study area, one quarter mile radius? Is that just around the train station, or what is it? It's generally foot centered on the train station. Okay. They, they just wanted some parameters so they can let the consultants know that it's not taking up too big, too large of a planning area. So, uh, task two, data gathering and analysis. Um, have we, it seems to me we've done a lot of data gathering and analysis of the downtown area. How, how is this going to be different? They will, as, as just like with the traffic study, they'll use what's available. They'll fill in gaps. Like the, It's up to the consultants to, to do, if they don't feel that the land use analysis is done. The fact that we've been doing a lot of recent studies, that we've got the TIF, there's probably not much more that they're going to collect. They might collect some tax-related information, but we pretty much have a big storehouse of, it, of data. And that's my point. Uh, I, I just hope we aren't spending $25,000 for getting the same information that we already have and we can analyze it ourselves. $125,000. we are just paying $25,000. Yeah. It, it's I'm not sure I understand what subcontracts are. <laughs> Consultant and subconsultants. It's a consultant to the consultant. Yeah, it, this is some of this is boilerplate with the RTA. They do okay. these grants every year, so you have to kind of go with what their their scope of services was prepared by RTA staff. We had an opportunity to review it, but they pretty much stay with the same framework. So the, they, they kind of give us this, and they say if if you do it this way, we'll pay the hundred thousand. If you don't, then we won't. Well, they, if, if you don't agree to it, they won't give you the grant. Because it seems so. to me like the, the, whole, the whole concept should start at task three, which is the public outreach portion. Maybe we should start here and see if there's any interest in spending any more money downtown. That's just my opinion. We could do that. The interest level has started from the EDC, who has recommended that we go ahead and do that. I think they believe that there is value in this and that it's coming from uh, your EDC commission up to you. Yeah. And I understand that it's a part of the 24-point plan that they, they had recommended. The, the thing that I'm, I'm a little concerned with is, is just some of the things that they say they're going to do here. Um, uh, uh, village's current marketplace as well as its future market potential on ways to encourage redevelopment of vacant and distressed properties. I can guarantee you that if, if there were investors out there that really felt like there was a lot of money to be made down there in those vacant properties and, and different locations, they'd be flocking. So I guess I don't understand what this is going to do other than enhance our ability to describe to them through the TIF what can be possible, right? Well, I think, I think you're getting an outside perspective of a professional planning consulting firm to kind of take a look at your downtown and give you ideas and set parameters down on paper on how to guide development. Okay. I mean, there's, there, I've been involved in these before, and it's a, 
pretty intensive look at the downtown. Okay. Well, in your past experiences, when you have been involved with this, of what, what's been the result? How have we used the results? You, 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 have, I, you have focused areas where you could pr focus your redevelopment plans. You could, they give you ideas on the densities. They give you connect, uh, links on how to tr try to improve those, those densities, improve the design work of the downtown. They'll look at shortcomings that we might not be seeing. They give you a lot of ideas. When they, uh, when we years ago had the factory down in the downtown area, did we utilize one of these uh, we, studies? We did. When we did that, we had a consultant, if you remember, was Steve Friedman. I and don't. Steve Pr Friedman helped us prepare. We did a, a, a similar kind of project. And, and Mr. Friedman actually is one of the consultants that will probably bid on doing this, not, not just for our <clears throat> town but for other towns. But we did a design charrette. We had public input at, at the – we had a big meeting at the um, golf, uh, course. golf course where people actually came in and we had ideas on how to redesign the downtown. And we used those that, – that ultimate design <coughs> that came out of there to guide the RFP for selecting the developer that actually did the downtown center. So it was a similar process. And the task that scares me the most is task number eight. Implementation strategies, plans, and policies. The thing that, the way that I read this, the consultant of the development implementation pr strategies provide a detailed outline and a detailed feasible time frame for the village to implement the plan. That sounds pretty expensive. Well, that's why when you com couple it with the TIF district, you have funds available to do redevelopment. Yeah, good. And if you okay. don't have that, you won't do the plans. And you might get it wrong, too. Right. It, it's possible. Okay. Thank you. Any other, is there any other questions? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. A motion carries. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Trustee Cameron. Next on our agenda is under Building Committee, Chairman Martin. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing this evening. No report. Thank you, Chairman Martin. Next on our agenda is under Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Ranke. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing in Finance and Golf this evening. Thank you, Chairman Ranke. Next on our agenda is License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing to report this evening. Chairman Carbonero, next on our agenda is Police and Health, Chairman Shipman. Thank you, Mayor. There's nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Chairman Shipman. Next on our agenda is under Public Works Committee, Chairman Ahrens. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a lot to report, but we've decided to put it on the consent agenda, and that would conclude our business for tonight. Thank you, Chairman Ahrens. Finally, on agenda item 13, new business. Is there any new business at this point anybody would like to address? Yes, Mr. President. Um, I have one item to add. Um, this is in regards to the Bartlett train station. I've uh, been working very closely with staff, working on uh, expounding on the heating area of the station. And uh, this time I would like to refer to... Madam Administrator, if you can elaborate. Well, let me tell you what we looked at. Uh, as you know, there, there's a very small area on the west side of the station that is open 24 hours a day. And after last year's winter, it became clear from some complaints, I think, uh, that, that you folks received that, number one, there were some problems keeping that open all the time from Metro standpoint. I think we've worked through that but that it's a very small area. And so we looked at uh, what we could do in terms of keeping the station open longer. And if we looked at uh, keeping it open until the uh, person, the ticket person leaves, which is about 1 or 1.30, until the last train gets in, which is at 10.30, to accomplish that, we would have the doors that face this, the track, 
where someone gets on a train, we would have those unlocked. And two gates inside that would restrict uh, the area to uh, the Metro ticket agent as well as the coffee area, the TV uh, would be restricted because uh, we want to discourage any vandalism there. We would have that open. We would have uh, a lock at 1030, an automatic lock that would uh, kick in. And we would have to have, uh, at some point, the police stop by to make sure that everybody's out of there. Nobody got, you know, well, they can't get locked inside. They can get out. We did look at what other towns do. Uh, some other towns do have a station that is open uh, a, a period of time to accommodate that kind of weather. To accomplish that with both of those gates and some automatic locks, I think we're estimating about $17,000. Uh, I think the staff time on it is pretty minimal. Uh, having the police department stop over just to make sure uh, that everybody is is out of there and it's locked up for the evening. Uh, I don't find too arduous, although the chief will tell you if they're uh, on another call or something critical, then we'll have to uh, rely on those time locks to get people out uh, when they need to. So I think it's something worth looking at. I think that uh, based on our winners around here, it isn't something we have done, but Trustee uh, Carter Carbonero raised it. I think he's had some uh, citizens calling him about this, and that's how we would propose to move ahead with it if the board would choose to do so. Is there, is there any opportunity for Metro to contribute to this at all, or would they entertain that at all or not? The answer is no. No. General fund? Where would the money come for? Yeah, or a public building fund. You know, that's a public building, and we could buy the gates out of there if you would like <clears throat> that. If we looked at some of the other alternatives as far as like those heat lamps, like you, you see know, on the CTA looked, platform. We looked at that. We can do that. It isn't going to provide the kind of protection from uh, the weather, and then of course there's the maintenance issue of keeping them turned on. But certainly that's an option, and we did look at it. I'm just wondering where that falls on the price point. Where that what? <clears throat> Where that I'm falls sorry. in a price point in comparison to seventeen thousand for two gates? Certainly less expensive. I don't. Do you have some? I think they're about fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for the good ones. <laughs> Mine at home for my bathroom. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, we didn't get pricing on that, but we can get pricing on that. Would that be like out on the in the front there, where the regular lights are? You just replace those yeah, lights with have heat to ones. Put it along the uh, in front where the the train comes in and people are waiting. Interesting. And I recognize that's got more of a recurring cost between electricity and maintenance, like you say. Mm -hmm. But if the initial capital outlay, I don't know. I just I think it's worthy of looking at. I commend Trustee Carbonaro for some solution ideas here to what uh, is apparently a problem for some of our residents or some of the people who use our computer station. We can take um, a look at that and try to get also some information about its effectiveness. I just, I think we went straight to one that, that Trustee Carbonero was looking at um, simply because of the intensity of the cold and the need to do something. You know, if it's snowing, that may keep you a little bit warmer, but it isn't going to do much when we have temperatures that are below zero. Right. Would the fenced-in area include the washrooms? No, we would. When the station is unmanned, the washrooms would be blocked off. Okay. So it's basically just kind of that center It's that little area. center corridor, places to sit in there, places to stay warm until you get on the train. And there's a small one on the side of the building, There right? is. It's on the west side. Uh, it was planned as a part of a, you know, 24-hour, the ability to get in there. But it's very small. I think it's about <coughs> nine or ten people to accommodate standing in there, which, you know, doesn't sound so bad until you go through a winter like we've had last year. And, and I think that that turned out to be not enough. What are the hours in the morning when the actual doors open and when do they close? They open uh, 
it's almost simultaneous with the first train and the ticket agent gets there right about the same time and that is 450 uh, 440 450 in the morning aha uh -huh. nice uh -huh. And the uh, uh, ticket agent usually leaves somewhere between 1, 1 1.30 in the afternoon. So then after the ticket agent leaves, when do the doors close? Then. Then? So after 1.30 or so during the weekdays, yeah. there's no entrance in except for that little small area? That's correct. Gotcha. Is the ticket agent the one that ushers them out? You have to leave now, locks the door? I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah. $17,000 sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. It is. Well, and then also, how often do we clean? Does that place get cleaned? We're responsible for cleaning, right? The, the vendor, the coffee, sorry, the coffee vendor is responsible for cleaning it. I'm sure they'll so, be excited about people dragging yeah, mud in yeah. there after they're done cleaning. So yeah. they it'll probably double, extra duties. It'll probably yeah. double the That's cleaning time. Point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be, I mean, just my opinion would be to look at maybe a, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a valid issue. I commuted for two years, and it was, uh, I know that Hanover Park's train station has that. They gate off an area, um, gives you a little bit more room, and uh, so I think it would be great. But I, I think we might want to look into, I know it's got to be expedited, because otherwise we're going to wait until winter's over. It won't matter. Um, but maybe look at uh, uh, the heat lamps and maybe, uh, maybe one al other alternative, possibly. What are the costs of the individual gates? Because we're talking two gates. What if we just put one up? The two gates is around 13000 and then we had the locks to add on to it. If you add one gate, we looked at that as an option of adding one gate on the eastern portion, which would then allow people at the east portion, uh, east, uh, mm -hmm. portion of the station but our concern with that is it also allows people access to the ticket agent window. There's a lot of glass display windows and woodwork and vandalism. The ticket agent, the ticket agent glass is bulletproof. That's bulletproof, correct. But there's a, <laughs> there's a tray that we've talked to some of the other stations, some of the issues that they've had, and it just opens ourselves up for more vandalism. But that is an option. That would be what half of the price then, right? Do it two phases. Make sure you do the other side. Take a chance that no one vandalizes the first year. Concerns, Chief? I'm sorry. Do you have any concerns about that? Just a one gate? Well, if you go up and down the rail uh, and you talk to other jurisdictions, vandalism is always a concern. Uh, you're right. Um, most of it's shatterproof glass, but. There's probably some glass that they would eventually want us, we would have to pay to switch out to plexiglass. There's a lot of informational type glass with things behind it uh, that will be exposed. Uh, there is a lot of woodwork, but it's just risk tolerance. I mean, uh, you know, we can put it on our patrol list and take a look at it when we can, but uh, I think what we're saying is there's greater potential for vandalism by leaving that eastern end open. But again, it's risk tolerance. Uh, I know we're on uh, the village will be on the hook for any damage that does occur. We had talked about putting a video camera inside, but we we've never done that, right? That's correct. Okay. And video cameras can at times be a deterrent. Sometimes they just verify a crime occurred. So again, it's risk tolerance. I don't say video cameras prevent crime if somebody comes in motivated. So we buy one gate, buy the next one next year, get one of the fake video cameras up for the first year. <laughs> we we serve the board's direction. We don't, don't take that off the record, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd camera. like. I'm sorry. I don't know why we wouldn't just do the whole project at once. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's, I, I think um, other trustees are worried about. It is a big price tag. Well, so say, I think and I, if we have a mild winter, then you know that. I know, but. Uh, uh, I don't know. It just seems it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not a huge percentage of our budget. And and if this is going to, uh, obviously it's not going to be for just Bartlett residents, but if if this is going to be something beneficial, just do it. You know, don't drag it out, even over two years. 
I, all I was going to say is I, I, I just would like to see the, what you come up with, and then we'll make a decision then. I mean, I, we I, certainly can do that. I, strangely enough, I agree with you all. I mean, I think if we're going to do the project, let's do it. But I'm just saying, let's see what other alternatives are out there. Yeah. So. Well, I, you know, I would agree if we're going to do it. I think the cost of uh, replacing some vandalism or fixing to that woodwork that they have in there, it's probably uh, worth the gate. And, and does the price point change with the type of door that we are, are, are gate. gate that we would use? I mean, are there are there other options than what you were looking at then, Dan? We uh, looked at several. For one thing, I want to clarify on: we w really wouldn't be able to put one gate up and then come back because the one gate for the east portion is actually on the. There's one section there. The TV is on the wall in that middle section, and we have it on. If we do the eastern portion, we have the gate on the behind the TV, if you will, so that the TV isn't in that area. If we do the center section, we have the we have to put the gate in front of the TV up taller, so that the TV isn't exposed. So you you really wouldn't be able to piece it together because of the TV being there trying to keep that TV out of someone trying to take it. Um, so I think we would have to look at that a little closer if that's what we want. If we wanted to try to do a phase-in approach. As far as the doors, um, the same thing with that. If you do the eastern portion, you're putting the automatic lock on the easternmost door. If you do the center piece, you're doing the automatic locks on the doors that are on the platform side, on the north side. So you wouldn't you would be putting money into the eastern door, you know what I mean? Well, so I guess what I was saying are the types of doors or gates that you're using. You know, you've got the Cadillac door and you've got the Chevy door, you know. What what are we looking at? We're looking at something similar that, that's there right now. It's one of the accordion-style type gates that it's manual that someone pulls and locks it up. So it's, I wouldn't okay. call it a Cadillac. All right. <clears throat> All right. Just curious if it would made a difference with the uh, the pr price if we brought down the price if we had just a little less intricate door so to speak. We would definitely we would definitely get more pricing. So hopefully we would be able to get. But um, the range is in that thirteen thousand dollar. I too think it's a good idea. If we're going to move forward, we should move forward on it. But for the most economical price we can get. Sure. How long uh, would this take to do? A week. If. We approved it, say, first meeting in January. If once we come back with the uh, the alternative price, once the once the vendor is selected and um, we choose the color and all that stuff, and they order it. As far as installs, probably a week. But I don't know how long and what the schedule is on the contractor to be able to get there and, and actually. So install. even if. Are you saying we're going to have to put this in the paper for someone to do that? No, it would be. It would be. It's up. less than twenty thousand dollars, so we would get we would get proposals and be able. We to could move it. on it right away. We'd be able to okay. move on it quickly. Because I, I, yeah, if we're going to do this, we don't want to wait all winter. That's. That. Yeah, we'll put it in about May. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time for the AC. No. Winter's going to keep coming. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> could we vote on the color too, like a bright pink or something? Oh yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right, so we'll have that information for the next board meeting. Very, very good. Any other new business? <coughs> Thank you, Trustee Mayor. Thank you. Um, one thing that I just a, a comment um, to Dan. Um, somebody had asked me to mention to, for our people that are tagging the trees to be careful because they had somebody walk, go down their, their um, street and tagged a few trees that they felt were still good. <laughs> so I don't know what the litmus test is there when there's no leaves on them, but the resident had to actually contact them and say, no, no, this tree has actually been treated and it's good. So just a little bit of a heads up. Right. What We have a survey of where all the ash tree are. Um, right now, as, as you stated, uh, it's hard to tell whether it's dead or alive without our arborist can look at it, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as far as whether it's being treated, we don't know unless a resident notifies us. That's why we do that 
door hanger to let people know, hey, we're going to be removing this tree, kind okay. of let us know. And so in that case, it actually worked. We were able to talk to the resident. Uh, I believe, you know, we withheld uh, removing that tree for now, and we moved on to the next one. So. Thank you. So any other new business? All right, then we'll move on to uh, question and answer. Any questions, answers, comments? I've got a question for the little man in the uniform. How about the big man in the no. uniform? No. Well, okay. Can you come to the podium? Is he for? Is he here for a badge? Oh yeah. Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Hello. I've got a question for you. Come up here. Can you come up and name your uh, troop? <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> This is your Merry Christmas right here. Yeah. <laughs> you get your public speaking badge, too. Here you go. Name and troop. I'm Matthew, and I'm from Troop 13. And how many people are in your troop, Matthew? 118. Wow. Ooh. And um, what, what uh, badge are you here for tonight? Citizenship in the community. Very good. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Well done. Thank you, Matthew. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. second. Moved by Trustee Shipman, seconded by Trustee Cameron. Would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aarons? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. We are adjourned.